Hey everyone, Michael Crump here, back again uh, from Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash mbcrump. Today I'm going to be taking a look at installing Kali Linux on Azure. Let's just jump right into it. So uh, here I am, I'm currently inside of the Azure Marketplace. Uh, it does ask you to go ahead and put in an email address, so I just dropped mine in. Uh, and then you can hit get it now. You can see there's a little bit of a plan and pricing details. We'll hit uh, continue here. And uh, once uh, this comes, uh, once this screen pops up, you are going to want to come in and you're going to want to uh, hit the create button. Uh, it brings you up to the dialog to create a virtual machine. Uh, so I went ahead and just filled out uh, some of like the name and so forth. What kind of starts to making a little bit more sense here is when it gets to the size, because you may not want to spend $112.42 a month. Uh, so I'm going to go over, we're going to select a size here. Uh, there is a variety of different sizes. I want something kind of that will fit my budget. So uh, let's see here. Let's select, uh, I think we may go with a B1. It's a basic plan. Uh, but it does give us, um, you know, two gigs of RAM. Uh, we're running around four gigabytes uh, of storage there, which would probably be enough for what we're needing right now. You can see here we've got an SSH a public key, which is how we're going to administer the account. Since it says Linux, after all, um, I'm going to change the name here to uh, be my uh, MB Crump, which is where I use everywhere. You can see that there's a key value pair of Kali Machine 1 underscore key uh, listed in here. So that's what it's going to generate once it finishes. For the inbound port rules, uh, I just went ahead and selected all of those. So we're now on uh, the next screen here. And so this is going to auto shut down the VM. I'm going to pick uh, Pacific Time because that's where I live. And I'm going to put it at 10 o'clock again. Wanting to save a little extra money by shutting it down at times when I know I'm not going to be using it. Uh, you can install different types of like extensions and so forth. Uh, if I just click on the extensions, uh, you can see there's a whole variety of extensions that I could put on that Linux uh, machine during creation, but I'm not going to. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go ahead and create the virtual uh, machine. And so you can see it is starting to spin up here. Uh, once it's finished, uh, it has a new key pair. I'm just going to go ahead and click download uh, the private key and uh, create the resource. So uh, we'll hit this button and we're going to get a key file that has been downloaded uh, to our machine. I am currently storing the key. So I'm storing the key in the .ssh folder and it's just named Kali Machine one uh, underscore key dot PEM, P-E-M. That's my permanent key. Uh, now um, what I'm going to do is uh, you can see uh, I'm, uh, I'm in .ssh and I'm just going to copy it in there. Maybe that will help you. Okay, so uh, we're going to copy this command. We're back into um, our command prompt here. I'm just going to paste that in there. And as you can see, I am now logged into the uh, Kali machine via uh, my Windows box. So we first should change the password of root, uh, sudo password, uh, passwd root, uh, give it a password. Uh, and then after that is updated, uh, what I'd like to do is um, now we're going to run su root. Uh, we're going to verify that that worked correctly. Okay, great. Now you can see root that we're in. Uh, what I need to run now is this apt-get uh, and then upgrade. I want to upgrade all of the existing packages. Now this typically takes a little bit of time, so um, I'm going to let this run for a bit, and then we will, uh, and then we're going to come back and uh, check it. Okay, while that's doing that, we're going to go back into our Kali machine. I'm going to type in the word inbound uh, for networking, and we need to open up a port here. 
if we go to, uh, we can see uh, 22 for SSH is open. Uh, but one of the ports that we're going to need is uh, I also want to RDP into this machine where I can have a graphical user interface. So I'm going to hit add inbound security rule here uh, for the port 3389. And I am going to make sure that protocol is set on TCP. I'm going to change the name here to make sure that the port name uh, matches up and that's just for our information now we can uh, give it a bit of a description if we want to want to uh, so remote desktop and we're going to hit add looks like everything is done here sometimes you will see a few error messages at the bottom uh, sometimes you can ignore them sometimes you can't um, and right here uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, install uh, GDM3. So we're going to do apt-get install uh, -f uh, GDM3. Uh, and now we're going to run an apt-get install xrdp to give us the ability to RDP into the machine. Uh, we need to do one more thing. We need to reboot or re-enable uh, systemctl enable xrdp. So um, this is just good just to run each and every time. And then we can do an echo xfce4 session and we can output that uh, if we wanted to to this dot x session. Now we can run service xrdp restart. And uh, from here our RDP should be working. Let's give it a try so uh, we'll head back over to our por portal we'll click on rdp we're going to download the rdp file and now that we downloaded that i'm just going to hit connect we're going to give this a yes and uh now we are logged in to that kali instance uh, we can go ahead and put in our username and our password uh, that we defined earlier i'm just logging in as root and uh, here we are. This is uh, our Kali instance running inside of Azure. Uh, you'd like to learn more, please join my stream. It's at uh, twitch.tv slash mbcrump. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.